Good morning. How are y'all? I'm uh, woo, 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 woo. I'm running on on uh, I don't know. I'm on ice skates. What's uh? I'm like crazy this morning. I'm like I don't know what's going on yet this morning. I'm running behind. I'm running, running rampant. Running hot. Hope y'all are doing okay. Good morning. Last day of working for me before the Christmas holidays. Nice. Congrats, Beth. Something on paper. 18 months of Twitch Prime subbing. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate you. Oh, and I got I got 2020 shred from you. 2020 shred. That's cool. Good morning, beautiful people. Broke my glasses overnight. Got to get out the Gorilla Glue. That's the worst. So, Claire, good morning. Schmevelin, good morning. Yeah, I used to always like have my backup glasses in case I uh, in case I broke out broke the pair that I I have. I don't really have that anymore. So I'd be I'd be in the same boat as you, Rewizzle. Same boat. Tainted crimson. Two days left and two weeks of vacation. So the left shark hype looks like a marijuana leaf if you're not looking at it real closely. I was like, what's? Yeah, it's like tainted crimson's about to blaze it. But it's really just left shark. <laughs> um, we have no plans this morning. I'm catching up on some plans, plans, planners, and plannering. Um, good day, Riley Twitch TV. Yeah, if you don't look straight at it, Tainted Crimson, you think it's a cannabis leaf. But if if you stare at it enough, it looks like it. You figure it out. Like clearly, I did. But you know, I'm also a 12 year old disguised in a old man's body so i see marijuana leaves where there aren't just like the bamboo pencil we opened up on uh, tuesday ordered your niece two pairs of glasses so they'd have a backup that's always smart no plans but we got planners so i gotta finish uh good morning rich dicks i uh i forgot to color in my uh um theme system yesterday so i'm working on that real quick this morning getting my uh getting caught up on my theme system um i i'm running like super behind this morning for no reason like i don't know what the deal is but i feel i think i'm just everything takes a little bit longer when you have a broken wrist and i don't take that into account i was like oh it's nine o'clock i still have time to eat breakfast and take a shower and all that stuff um, so, and then it ends up taking like 45 minutes and I'm still like not dressed, like, like 945, I'm still like in the bedroom, like before I'm wanting to start this at 10. So I'm a little bit scatterbrained this morning. So yes, y'all ask me questions like heads and fails, any pins coming your way for the holidays, self-bought or otherwise. So two parts. Um, I never ask anyone to buy me pens unless I tell them specifically what it is, right? Like my family's just not going to like up and come up with like an amazing pen gift. So I bought myself a pen. In lieu of that, I bought myself a pen. Um, it's not in here. I opened it up on Tuesday. I bought myself the Montegrappa Mia Meteor Shower. So if you go look that up, that is my um, present to myself for um, for stationary wise for so I did buy me a pen, but I'm not going to use it until I get to where I can use it with my right hand. So it's just going to sit there for a little bit. So I haven't been using many fountain pens uh, recently. Question for Brad. Do you like 1231 or 1-1 one, one better? January 1 for me because it means planner setup day. Um, I wish I could tell you how much I love this question. Um, that's a big, big question. Um Twelve thirty one, because a lot of times I won't wait to set things up. Right, I start like I talked about on the podcast yesterday. I could have held this theme system to start it on January first if I wanted to. You know, have this nice clean date break. But you know what? It was Monday. I was ready to start using it. I started on twelve fourteen. The first date of my book is twelve fourteen. But that's also knowing you like I know you. I don't do things the same way, right? So like you will have, a, I don't want to say rigid's the wrong term, but you have a dedicated setup that starts at the beginning of the month. You can work on setting that month up how 
you're going to want to use it and process it the rest of the month. And the best day, the most exciting day of the month is arguably the day you get to create the next month's layout and, you know, use all the pins and all the tape and all the stamps and all the stickers to say, hey, today we get ready for the month. I'm getting all my crap out on my desk and it's go time. It's the first of the month. For me, as someone who's not as dedicated to that, that, that monthly setup, like I'm okay with like, I would rather, I'm more excited about the 31st because I've now got everything prepared already for the next day and the next day just happens, right? I don't have to do the setup on, on uh, the first. Does that make sense? So like, I think we come at it from two very different points of view um, as far as like a planner setup goes. So I get that. Please say I'm not the only one with the notepad where I theory craft layouts. You are not. Um, I've shared in this book before um, where I took, uh, let's see if I can find it and I'll show you one that I did uh, of the exact thing you're talking about uh, temporarily away. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, so I started um, this page just to see if I could like roll my own layout and I decided I hated it. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. My hair is bothering me. <clears throat> the Aussie Master, 28 months of subbing. Is that the longest? Do we have longer than 28? That's amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Why didn't it alert? Gosh, dog it. So temporarily away, yeah, you should always experiment with a new layout that's going to work for you. Um, and I, I decided that I, I didn't like didn't like what was happening there. <clears throat> um, after the last stream, I dropped bucks on the Montegrappa Zero Caramel as my Xmas birthday for myself. I like that Xmas birthday. Most expensive pen I ever purchased. Woo, I think you'll like that one. I haven't tried the Zero specifically, but I've been really enjoying what uh, Montegrappa has done. Montegrappa is one of those pens. If you knew me kind of in the beginning of my fountain pen thing, I really didn't grasp what Montegrappa was was bringing to the table and to their credit they've changed along the way as well and Montegrappa and I have had these two lines and our find our lines have finally met and crossed and now they're one of my favorite brands just from a from a, a feel fit and performance perspective for my handwriting style just got my first Pelican M800 Stone Garden. That's a classic. That's a great pen. Great classic. Montegrappa's just never appealed to me, and I don't know why. Totally fine. Yeah, like, I get that. Heads and fails. Like, it is not a brand for everybody. Like, and I get that. And like I said, it wasn't a brand for me until probably, like, two years ago. Even, like, even when they started coming out with the uh, the Copper Mule. Like, I was like, okay. It was like I see the, I see you mule, but that's not really my my thing. And then they just uh, continued to improve since then, and and I like them. Temporary away, I have forty to fifty half scale layouts for two page spreads that I'm working through putting into practice next year. I love that. Do you share any of that, like on Instagram or anything like that, or you just keep that all to yourself? Like it's it's good to keep it all to yourself. But I was just curious. Is there a brand that you could say covers enough of the market that it's for everyone? Uh. Yeah, probably Lamy is the first one that comes to mind. And I say that because of the Lamy Studio. It's right smack in the middle of great value, great, great price. But then that's the mid-range, right? Like I'm looking at the mid mid-range out. You can take something like the Studio, which is kind of like perfect for everybody pin. Although the metal section, a lot of people don't like. Fair. But then you can ramp it up to the 2000 and then you can ramp it down to the fun area with the safaris and the all-stars and then there's a good mix in between of pencils ballpoints roller balls and at no point are you going over two hundred dollars right because then uh, like there's that two hundred dollars is like that point of um diminishing returns for like value then you're buying then you're paying for other things you're you know branding materials aesthetic you know looks color style 
um, which is why I, I, Lamy fails at the top end, like considerably, considerably fails at the top end. Platinum's actually a good choice. Plax, Platinum is more segmented, I think, though, than Lamy. I think Lamy is broader from zero to 200, where Platinum is a little bit more segmented. It's like $5, $20, $150. You know, even though Curidos is in there, like eighty dollars, I don't I almost don't count that like as a if I'm answering the for everyone question because the Curidos is not for everyone, right? Studio was the first pen I bought after over a decade of not using fountain pens. Yeah, I get that. The Lamy Limited Edition two thousand are amazing looking and way overpriced. Yeah, I just think they could do better. Like I, I just have a real, real belief that there could be something better there i don't know if we'll ever see it the more i use the curidos the less i like it see i was the opposite rich sticks what nib do you have on it what i like about lami is that you can upgrade later to one of the gold nibs without having to replace the bobby body great call what nib do you have on a death knight cool Death Knight nib. What the hell's a DK nib? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes. That was like a joke only for me, and I I really enjoy enjoy it. My apologies. <laughs> Yeah, Death Knight nib would be much cooler. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Good morning. Snow day here in Eastern PA. So, snow day. Gumbo Man Pat, snow day Tony. But Tony was not as happy uh, about the snow. How much snow are we talking to, my friends in the Northeast? What are, what are, our, what are our measurements? <clears throat> Temporarily awry. Yeah, and like, I'm not, that's not, I was just, I'm more out of, I, as someone who l likes to learn from different layouts, like, like, I love Instagram for the visuals of, like, show me all the pretty things, right? But I, what really interests me is someone figuring something out and, sh try and sharing, and it's like, you know what, I'm trying to figure this out, like, that's interesting to me, which is, I, I don't know, I haven't been posting on Instagram as much, I haven't just been in that, like, that mode to get it, although I've been feeling kind of whack the past few weeks anyway so <clears throat> have you already settled on a yearly theme i'm struggling a bit with incorporating my 2020 theme which got corroded into my plans for next year that's a great question um wingting is that welsh mwntg so yes the, the answer is yes and i'm hesitating uh i'm hesitant to tell you what it is because we're going to share that on the show um, in the new year. So I'm going to hold off on telling you what it is. But number one, I've decided on it. It's written down in my book. And what I what I found was interesting is I do, I am open to the theme idea that you can change it any day, any time you want, right? It doesn't have to run annually, right? If you think the theme can change, should change, change it. But in general, I don't. I generally run like a full year. Let's see how this goes. Things change, whatever. So I broke out. I keep the the last two themes. I looked at what I wrote down for my themes in the past, which in 2019 was year of experimentation, the 2020 the year of ideas. And I like that there's a little bit of continuity, con continuity, continuity between these themes. And then this coming year's theme is actually, a, without it meaning to be, is actually a continuation of the year of exper experimentation, the year of ideas. Um, so my 2021 theme will be um, kind of a just happenstance that it's a continuation. That just shows you where my head is. My head is very much in the same space as what I want these. So I have to work on like, you know, the descriptors of the outcomes and the things I'm hoping to accomplish 
Um, it's going to be a little bit... M so these last two themes have been a little bit more open-ended. And this year, I'm going to tie some black and white goals into the theme, which I haven't done before. So we'll talk about that more, but I, I have committed to it. I have committed it to paper. It's written here. Um, so yeah, so there you go. Four to five inches outside of a frost lich. Now y'all are getting into my death knight things. Maybe we'll play, maybe we'll play some Warcraft this weekend. I don't know. Only about three inches and in, I got to check with my sister. Let's see how much. Oh, didn't get it. Rip. Let's see how much it snow my, uh. Sorry, y'all have me curious now. All right. <clears throat> you need a list of pen nerd jokes? My whole life is a pen nerd joke. At the moment, I'm catching up on, on the chat. At the moment, I have the Mango Safari with the Gold Nib installed. I think that's a great idea. Like, for someone, once you get into the pens more, you can, um, like, I say this with Kaveco all the time. Like, I have one nib that I switch around. New Jersey over a foot and coming down. Stowe stayed south of you, Claire. That's interesting. That's good, though. A couple of inches and a lot of ice in D.C. That sounds terrible. All right, Riley. Important question. Just got a Sailor 1911 red mosaic. Nice. And find the nib to be not quite up to snuff. Should I send it away for adjustment or should I wait to have it done in a pin show? In this particular situation... I would send it off and because there's a few people that I would trust blindly with sailor nibs like that it's sh it shouldn't be a situation where it's far enough gone that you really need to like sit down and say man we need to figure this out right it should be a situation where you're seeing or feeling not something correct and you could explain it well enough to to send it off and say hey can you tweak this um, you know, like it's, it's either skipping or scratching or it's really, really dry, things like that. So, um, yeah, I, I would, I would send it off blindly if it were me, I, I wouldn't wait because that's a cool pen. You want to use it, right? Even if it might take a month for it to get done, who knows when your next pen show is going to be. <clears throat> Uh, you picked a, <clears throat> is that prudence or pr the year of prudence to allow me to continue? What worked in 2020 prep for life changes? I know I'm coming in 2021. That's good. That's good, Cal. So yeah. And like, don't hesitate to, uh, to change those things on the fly as needed. I'm sure that's what Mike talked a lot about in cortex, which I haven't listened to neither as Tony on, um, cortex, um, about how the coronavirus changed everyone's plans last year. Um, I haven't listened to that yet, so I was I was holding off on that. Open and broad yearly themes, more goal focused seasonal sub themes. I was lucky that the year of reflection didn't get too messed up by 2020. That makes a lot of sense. I wonder if that's kind of what I'm setting myself up for this year, like an overall with some sub themes. Whereas the previous years, I was thinking more just broadly, like things I wanted to work on personally, just um, overall. So yeah. That sounds like what themes should do. Manufacturing accidental continuity. Thanks for your advice. Looking forward to the pod. Yeah. So um, that's exactly right. Um, that I, I always struggle with these words, but like you, you said it well. It's it's just basically, you know, you you do the work now, not for the results tomorrow, right? You do it so you're ready when you really need them at some indeterminate date in the future. That's the way I work and the way I try to do things. Mm. Paper that cat lady, great point. I don't trust the mail right now. Wait to send your sailor till after Christmas, just saying. 100%, wait till January at this point. <laughs> Yeah, don't send anything till January. Um, we're going to, like, I'm going to stop shipping this weekend, even though that's really too late. Like, we're not getting hardly any orders now because people know that they're probably not going to get them. I've got orders 
like I'm getting emails for orders that um, they bounce every day, right? Like the they'll scan every day saying late, late, late. So yeah, it's really, really good. Starting my first Hobonichi five year in 2021. That's a great idea. Those, if you're interested in something like that, I've always been intimidated by the idea of the five year journal, but it's not like that at all. It's actually, if you look into it, it's a really, really well set up um, type of thing. If you wanted to capture, you know, that, um, that type of information running for five years. So, all right. So my sister's got a, a foot of snow and it's still coming down here. I'll show you all this. Good Lord. Let's see if we can see this. They're in central Massachusetts. So. There you go. There you go, chat. <clears throat> the gold nib in black on the mango. I like your style, El Coco. I like your style. I live in Indiana and pretty much every major hub around me isn't accepting new packages. UPS is so overwhelmed. The classic patio furniture pick. Yeah, that's so where my sister lives, they're like, whatever. Like that's that's normal for them. I mean not normal, but they're they're like used to that. <laughs> yeah, she just texted back, no no stow day off though, remote school. <laughs> yeah, they like they don't miss school for that where they live. Good morning, Tessa. All right, I'm gonna finish coloring in my circles. So I do this thing. So let me show y'all real quick. <clears throat> um, so I like to use the colored pencils for my circles, right? And my habit tracker, I never thought I would use a habit tracker. <clears throat> my kids have a snow day and they're remote, yeah. So they don't, they are remote, no snow day is, is what I got out of that. So I have my habits and I track them, you know, either, either zero, half or one, you know, zero didn't do well, half did something and then full circle did everything. So I keep my favorite colored pencils are the Tombow Erogitin sets. Um, and I keep them in this little box. So what I do, so I know, um, so I make sure I pick a different color every day, but the way I don't have to cheat, keep track of what I pick is I face them all the same direction and then I pick it and then when I use it, I turn it and I do it the other direction. I just have to remember when it gets about 50-50 which way I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's the only flaw in my in my program so you can like see the two that I've used are facing the other direction now and then when I'm done with this one it'll face this direction too but then like at some point I'll get confused over oh which way am I going and then I'll just try to figure it out so anyway that's that's how I do it because I, I like I don't like to use my regular pens or pencils on these habit tracker pages I like to use the, um, I like to use colors. I started using markers, like I've used brush, like a set of brush pen markers before. Um, and that worked pretty well, but I just like, I keep these pencils on my desk as it is because I use them so much. So I just, uh, they're, they're like one of my favorite stationary products ever. Brad and Chat, jealous of all your snow, it's just raining here in Cumbria. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be like 42 degrees here and cloudy all day. We, it rained mostly yesterday. Those are such nice colored pencils. They are. They really are. Rich Dicks. Thanks for the bits, buddy. What is that Corgi doing? Corgo 500. Nice. <clears throat> um, I've decided this year I'll be buying those little 36-page Tomoe River notebooks from Goulet and using them on a custom lover journal thing. That's really cool. That's smart. What are these? Are these like New Year ones? 2020 Celebrate. Yeah. All right, let me finish coloring this in and then I have a question. 
What is my question? I had a question. Then I started reading and I forgot my question. 29 degrees outside of Philly. I'm using my right hand more with my pencils. I haven't given up on my left-handed writing, but I'm more like dedicated to pencils that end up working with my right-handed. Needle girl, hold that thought. We will we will hit that up. That's a good question. I wrote a song and I'm singing. I wrote a song and I'm singing. All right, last one. All right, sorry, I had to get that done. That was driving me crazy. All right, <clears throat> what was my question? I forget my question. I'll bring up my question this, this in a second. All right, Needle Girl asks, are you thinking that we'll, there will be pen shows in 2021? Um, I would be surprised before the summertime. Um, I think the early year ones are going to go on the schedule. Um, I don't know about Philadelphia. I haven't heard a word about Philly. Have y'all? I haven't looked into it. I mean, that's that's like a month away. Or do has Philly said anything? Um, I'm I wouldn't go. Like, there's certainly not, right? No, already canceled it. Okay, that makes hundred percent sense. So, after that, what are you looking at? Uh, L.A., Baltimore, Little Rock, Atlanta. I would be shocked if any of those went off. Um, after that, we can start talking. Anyone with ADHD find any specific layouts that work for them? I've yet to find one which works for me. I have a notebook that is full of attempts. I love that question, Claire. I, I wish I had some more experience on um, what type of setup works best for ADHD. I just, uh, what I was going to say is I don't necessarily have ADHD, but I just c commenting on what, what, what Riley is saying, the, the less rules, the better, which is why I don't stick with complicated planners, which is why I can't do things like bullet journal, like the proper version of a bullet journal or things like that. Brad, did you ever get a Platinum UEF 3776? I'm drawing with mine this morning, and it's amazing. I have it probably only because they're hard to find in Platinum color in the Rhodium Trim. Do they even make them in Rhodium Trim? I've certainly tested, used, and enjoy the UEF. I haven't wanted to own one yet. They do have the just the Rhodium Trim one. Can you find it though? Like, is it available? Like, does someone keep that in stock? Because if so, I will buy one next year because I like that nib so much. They just make the basic black, the all black one. Okay. The new greenish one does. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I'll get one. I, I do like that nib. I have a lot of nibs that are like that. So I haven't been, when I tested out my first UEF, and loved it. Um, it was it was on loan to me, and then I never bought one. But I ended up having uh, a bunch of other pens that have a similarly fine um, um, nib, and then I haven't been rushing to the UEF. But I sh I need to get one. That's a nib that I should have. Talk to your buddy Ron. Okay. Cool. I will do that. That'll be on the list for next year's shopping list. Do we have next year's shopping list already? I don't think so. Have someone tried out the diamine teal? Dime, what do you mean diamine teal? Like the just the ink diamine teal? Temporarily awry. Oh, um, OSU almost missed this question. This is a really good question. Um, OSU ATS said, are you and Mike even talking about Kickstarter campaign timeframes next year? Um, Yes, and we're talking about skipping next year. 
that's the working plan for pen addict kickstarter next year do not hold me to that as a fact yet but i'll go ahead and tell y'all now we are not planning on a kickstarter because we do these kickstarters to fund our travel right we don't do them as like profit centers um so we're just not gonna up and do one just to like make money you know from a kickstarter project and make something cool like that, that's cool like that's great we but i do enough other kickstarters and projects and stuff to make money from <laughs> literally every 3776 model on the shallot has uef awesome okay well that makes my choices even better so we're gonna hold off this year and plus we know that we're going to the um planning on going to tokyo in 2022 so we're okay holding off this year because we still have funds left from last year that we're just going to roll over for travel. Thomas Hall's fountain pen education is still sinking his hood up but here and there. That's 100% the UEF that I borrowed and tried from. It was it was really like Thomas knew the things that I was into and really nailed you know my my style and aesthetic. So I will have to get a UEF on a barrel that I like. So I'll I'll get a rhodium trim UEF. What inks do you what inks have y'all been enjoying with the UEF? I would probably just go with the basic black or blue black platinum. Do y'all use the carbons in the UEFs? Standard black or carbon? Diatrimentous document black. Nice. Yay, Brad. What did I do? Yay, me. Woo. Birmingham Penco Soft Pretzel. Is that an ink color or a pen color? Oh, that's is that what you use in your UEF? Is that a light color? That sounds like a light brown color. Good morning, everyone. Still half asleep? Yeah, join the club. I'm still drinking coffee this morning. I bet that looks good, that antique brown in a UEF, in an art style, probably looks amazing. Get that, I like, I really enjoy sepia inks in the fine, fine, fine nibs like that. Here I am feeling fancy using a Lamy, Lamy 1.1. Um, the Lamy 1.1s are amazing, so. You should feel fancy. <sighs> yeah, that'd be amazing, Slumberland. I can picture that. Yeah, I'd love to see it. It'd be very cool. Oh, I got my friend Andrew sent me a head, uh, drew me a headshot of me. It was really good. Where I don't have it in here though. <coughs> So, are y'all, is everyone, here's a question, let's see, let's see if I can pose this question correctly. Does anyone in here use a digital planner but not a paper planner? I'm just curious, out of this group that's analog inclined, do you use digital journaling, digital planners, and no analog or do you use a combination or do you use no digital some analog or no planner at all yeah like i guess that's kind of my question is like do you even need do you even need a planner but i asked i would assume tony we'll, we'll pick on tony real quick do you use a calendar right you have a family you have kids you have schedules and that's a different thing than a planner i understand <clears throat> Analog only, my digital life is a mess. Paper only, digital only, Tile Max. Interesting. Combination of Google Calendar copied into paper calendar. Paper calendar. <sighs> Mac Calendar with Fantastical. Journal is 100% analog. I think that's probably 
the main, like if we did a chart where we could somehow co collaborate and combine all of these answers, I think digital planner, like list to do scheduling, analog journal. Only digital, analog only. OSU, I'm gonna come back to your question, hold that thought. Paper for planning out, iCal for time planning, no planner. Pano book, not a calendar. Digital calendar, analog planner. I think that's probably what I'm close to, Firestarter. Should or need, yeah. So like there's this whole meshing of, of tools that we need. Like we need the calendar, we need to-do lists and task lists and planners and journals. Like there's lots of separate things to do. combination as a guy in his 20s with no kids i find don't i find i don't have a need for planners my plans change every hour but i write things i need to remember in my field notes then review it each day that's smart i like it everything's stored digitally but then i make some lists on paper as my highest priority tasks carolina photog that that's probably me it's all in my head i need to write it down more yeah Miss G's Crafties, what's up? Digital calendar. Oh, for work. Psh. What do you use, Brad? So I keep, I have to have a digital task list for recurring tasks that need to be done on a daily and weekly basis. So I use Todoist digitally. And then I will um, add in a uh, paper planner. Um, a weekly planner where I have one week on the left side of the page and then a blank page on the right hand side to write down other things that don't fall in the recurring um, tasks or things that do fall in the return recurring tasks that I need to make sure that like I'm really thinking about so I use both I'm heavily into both um, and then just like the Google Calendar for family calendar through um, the calendars plus app I think so a lot of digital and a lot of analog. So, <clears throat> but like with a family, like the digital calendars are king, right? We could never just have like a um, paper, paper calendar. I can't do digital as I would have to sync with too many devices. I don't know, that's kind of a feature, right? Paper and ink helps to form thoughts, but my phone tells me where I have to be when. That's a good way to put it. I like that. Morning, Aurelius. Look who's upright. Woo! Did you just wake up? All right, what was OSU's question I said I'd get back to? So, OSU asks, have you used Gina's journaler, journaler nib? It's awesome in trying to figure out if it's classified more as a medium metallic, cursive metallic, or stub. Would want that grind on many more nibs. To me, it's more of a stub nib, although I don't know that they, that's in the descriptor of it. It has softer edges, right? It's got more stubbish edges to it than me, but it's a very stiff nib and really, really great. Um, I, I really like it. <laughs> Use digital for events and tasks because it's easier to keep work, personal, family separate without carrying multiple paper products or maintaining a visual system on a single paper product. Yeah. I think, I don't know. Digital definitely helps with the recurring tasks. Like I don't, I can't really do recurring tasks on paper, right? I would lose track of time um, because I like, I like reminders. Like I like alerts, but there's only so many I can, I can do. I can't get on board with the cult of busy. I agree with that in principle. I have pages and pages of thoughts in my notebook on what the cult of productivity. <clears throat> I, and I think we, we align pretty well in, in that, Tony. But I still, that stuff still interests me because I keep thinking, well, maybe there's 
like one little thing I could do different. And then, I don't know, I end up losing time and thinking about it. Squirrel's out on the patio having breakfast and the dog is flipping out. Like, why do we have to be doing so many things? Agree. But, I mean, the other argument is like, well, we have to do things. So why don't we do them as efficiently as possible so then we can go do other things? You know, that's the, the, the other side of the coin. But in, I, I agree with you in principle. We are on the same page. Don't get me wrong. All right, should I get some more coffee? Should we talk about this some more? I really don't have any plans today. We can keep talking about planners and ideas and pens and UEF nibs. Should I get some more coffee? I really don't have any like huge, huge thing I need to uh, run from. Single, no kids, and a recluse, so I don't have much to plan anyway. I use an analog bullet journaling mostly for the fun of designing the pages. Like that's valuable right to me the fun of designing the pages is valuable to me in that it uses things uses parts of your brain it it keeps you keeps you going um yeah i i I love that all right so i'm gonna get some more coffee two seconds brad tell us your worst experience with shoes i'll think about that while i grab this coffee be right back Wow, that got cloudy. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna go back through some of these some of these comments. Um, temporarily awry. I'm honestly working towards less digital. Google taking my daily chores and help helping me by building me an itinerary wasn't a fun surprise. That's crap. Yeah. Tony, weren't you working on a black ink review? Oof. Yeah, I think it's done. Yeah, Patrick is says the important thing is finding a system that works for you and whoever you are and reflects the best way to motivate you to keep track of what is important to you. That will and should something psychological self manipulation. Um, like for me, the best system is no system, right? But there are things that have to be done. Notes on an anti-capitalist perspective on protectivity will be a fine title for. <laughs> the last thing I am is anti-capitalist. <laughs> Someone else can write that book. <laughs> oh, Tainan Crimson's cat is mad it's not snowing. Brad, tell us about your worst experience with shoes. I don't really have a worst experience. I did get some shoes. Should I do a shoe unboxing? These will blow your damn minds. This is, I got the, or, I ordered the ultimate Brad shoes and they arrived yesterday. I have not unboxed them yet. Should I do a shoe unboxing on here? God, y'all are going to kill me. <clears throat> the problem with busy work is you get penalized for being fast. A hundred percent get composted. <laughs> Are you giving any stationary gifts this year? No, I gave my, I always give my niece like something arty, uh, but she just wanted a, like a Dick Blake uh, gift card this year. I don't think I'm giving any other stationary good gifts. Setting up the weeks in my bujo is like meditating, helps me reflect as what's going on. Absolutely, I think that's super valuable. I might get banished for this, but I just keep one of those cheap 5x8 pads from Costco next to my desk for daily to-dos. Not at all, because that is not something you need to keep, right? That needs to be, needs to go on the list, it needs to get done, and it needs to go in the trash. There's nothing wrong with that. I've used to-dos for several years now for recurring things, but do a lot of paper to coalesce my work and personal lives. 
Yeah, I think that's what I'm like. I'm, I'm probably on like year three of Todoist, Todoist at this point. You can see, oh, Ink Dependence, Mike, you just wait. You just wait. All right, I'll go get these shoes. I, I'm I'm only half teasing. Like I don't want to open these. I really want to open these. <laughs> um, this this is the this might be like the ultimate Brad shoe. I should probably just stop buying shoes after this. All right, chair stream again. Be right back. Toby wants to say hi. Come here. Oh, big stretches. Toby was sleeping. <clears throat> Toby wants you to show you his handsome boy sweater. There he is. It's cold today, so we wear our sweaters, right? We wear our sweaters. This stream has inspired me to finally start the Midori five-year journal I've had sitting for a few years. Yeah, we were just talking about that uh, earlier, Sarah. I think those are actually a pretty good idea. They are laid out better than I thought. So, what you think? Huh? Yeah, blue's his color. He looks good in red, too. What are you looking at? What do you see? Hmm. All right. All right, uh, still haven't used my original theme system journal. Wow, he's going nuts over there. What are you doing? All right, Ugh. orange shoes with purple accents now. All right, so this is, Toby, chill. Just found this memo pad, what is this? Trolls paper. That's actually a pretty cool little vintage pad. I like that. Um, so this shoe is very much like one of those, um, one of those very Brad Japanese pen kicks he gets on, right? So this shoe, um, I saw it, I had to have it. Um, it was only released in the Asian market. Shocker, I know, right? Shocker. So I had to buy, uh, I had to buy it in the secondary market, um, which means I had to pay a lot of money for it. But they just weren't available in the U.S. And you'll see why um, in a minute. And um, there's a high possibility that you will hate these shoes. Like I'm just, I'm setting this up for failure. These are really, really wild, but you'll see why I bought them for myself once I open them up. The new Leonardo and Purposello celluloid is my jam, but so expensive. Um, This was a limited edition, uh, Jackie. So they're not custom, but they were like small release. Um, do you have a link to that, Leonardo? <clears throat> Oof. All right, I'm I'm rolling this out as long as as long as we can. <clears throat> Let's see what this. See what this Leonardo looks like. Oh wow, yeah, I haven't seen that one. Holy cow, that is expensive. Let me pull that up here. Man. Oh, there's only 10 of them made? Six out of 10? What is the story here? 
Is there a story here? M3G Thunder. The crashing sound and color of new beginnings. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Okay, so it's store exclusive for this pen venture. Momento Zero Grande Thunder. That's crazy. That's crazy. Does the box provide hints? It does. I'll show you the box. I wanted to see this. Yeah, I haven't seen them do like a limited edition of 10 before. That's pretty wild. <clears throat> so this image is the easy part, right? A lot of y'all know what those are. This image is the Brad part. Are y'all seeing this yet? Are you are you picturing why Brad has a problem with these shoes yet? Whew. Um, speaking of stationary, Jason Hobbies, a while back, you recommended a backpack bag company that was super customizable with a bunch of different sizes and styles. Lost the name. The, the bag I bought was Reload. Um, they're out of Philadelphia. Reload bags. Um, so, yeah, let's open this up. Red. Blue. These are Masubi shoes. 100% Masubi shoes. Just wait till you, till you see them. So yeah, I had to hunt these down on the secondary market because there was no way I was going to get them otherwise. They are Masubi shoes. So these are Jordan 4s. I'm just going to call them the Masubis. Like, this is everything I want in a shoe, right? Like, if I was designing a shoe, I would come up with this. Right? So, yeah. So, so they're actually called the sashimi. So, that's one. And then the other, they're, they're different. Both of them are different, right? The pattern's not the same on both. Right? So, the, the patterns and panels are different on both so that's that is the right shoe then this is the left shoe so you can see why this is a very brad shoe right there so um that's what they'll look like this should end like any shoe buying i do because i don't know that there's a better shoe for me than this right that is like you find Brad pins. This is a Brad sneaker. Like if you've ever seen one. I mean, look at the, look at the heel tabs are even different. Yeah. So, well, that's the thing. The whole shoes are mismatched. Right. The patterns are different. All around. So yeah, that's what I went and did. Um, I'm pretty happy with them. <laughs> I know you, Michael. So I think these are called, um, uh, they just have the color names on here, but it's it is really the, uh, um, sashimi, jo uh, Jordan four sash sashimi is how you'd look them up. But yeah, I'm pretty happy. So yeah, there's the box, you know, got the pattern on the outside. So yeah, that's, um, there's very... There's a couple of pens um, that I have to have, and then a couple of shoes that I have to have, then everything else is just kind of, uh, you know, on a whim. Shoes are crazy expensive, but compared to what we spend on pens, they're a little bit cheaper, relatively. That's exactly why I bought these, Michael, because of the Asics that I have. That's one of my favorite pairs. The Japanese, I have a pair of Japanese denim Asics. Like, that's my aesthetic, and these are the the way i feel about shoes the way normal people feel about pins yeah totally ink dependence mike 11 months of seven let's go 
Thanks, buddy. <clears throat> um, so regular Jordans cost like if you were getting like the regular, like the classic Jordan, the Jordan one, the high top classic Jordan one, they're like 180, 200 bucks. Like if you can ever find them, you know, they, they don't release, they're not like a regular stock item. Do crazy shoes like that come in larger sizes like 15? Um, that's pushing it. Def uh, thir 15 might be the max. Definitely like 13s. I wear an 11. Um, they definitely go up to 13. Um, things like that. <clears throat> so these are like, um, this is like the Memento Zero Stromboli, right? There's a few things. I'm very generally... I buy a lot of stuff, I'm, but I'm good at saying I need this, I don't need this. And then there's some things like I have to have. Like the Leonardo Memento Stromboli, I tried to go and get that. This shoe, I went and got it, right? There's a few things. That's why I try not to buy everything. So when there's a thing that I really want, I'll go get it and be, be happy with that. So there you go. That's like wearing your favorite journal covers on your feet. So yeah, I will take a picture of these um, with my Masubi notebook and send it to Daryl um, whenever I get them out to wear sometime sometime this weekend. So yeah, that was that is the most, one of the most um, crossover shoe pin type of things that I have. Hey buddy, what you doing? Come here. I'm the only one home. I think Toby's telling me he wants to go out. Come here. Come here. What you want? Were you just checking on me? All right. I'm going to I'm gonna not look at him. Let's see if he yells at me. Stromboli is cool, but my Casa della Grafica, Stila Grafica 75th will be here Monday. What's the, uh, would you have a link on that one? What did I get? Toby's in here, stinking it up. 2020 Unity. My in-laws are getting a little frou-frou lap dog like yours this weekend. Now I need a matching keyboard. I will eventually, I will commit to having the one fancy schmancy keyboard. I'm just not there yet um, on like the things I need. Like, I mean, of course I don't need new sneakers. I've got like a lot. And I don't need any pens. I've got like a lot, but that's why when I'll, I'll go buy them now, I will... Uh, I would just straight up, you know, wait for the right one, then pounce. So that's what the keyboard is going to be for me, I think. All right, let's see this one. 104 mismatch keys. Oh, yeah, this one I have seen. I think this is the best looking one. Even though I bought the green one, right? I'm very happy with my green one. I think this is the best looking one. If this came out at the same time as the red and green, I would have bought this one. That's great looking. Hey, website people, we don't like the snowflake idea is pretty cool, but you, it's it's okay if you didn't have to didn't do that. That'd be okay. Yeah, this is a great pen. Although I might have still gone with the red or the or the green anyway because my blue Hawaii is already like a blue. Leonardo anyway so maybe I would just uh has uh just had to uh sell the blue Hawaii but yeah that's I think that's the best looking one I'm surprised you don't have a Razor Naga Mouse yet yeah I would probably I'm not that dedicated I like just to goof off so what pencil are you using today um I was still using just before we came on i'm still using my mmx kind of wearing it down um and then um the tennessee red which i asked for some more of these for christmas i did ask for these for uh, a gift a, a dozen of these i don't know if i'll get them or not but i thought that'd be a cool gift for me the snowflakes are very 1998 yeah at least there's no music right no auto playing music so yeah i haven't when i bought this um PC and was getting the mouse and keyboard for it. I didn't overdo it because I wasn't really playing any PC games at the time. The Logitech trackball was my favorite mouse when I worked. 
I went, th- I had two of those, went through two of those in 15 years. And I was the only one at the office who used it. And I, I enjoyed it because people wouldn't come touch my crap. But to me, that's the best ball. This, and I'm talking about the thumb, the, the track ball on the side, not the middle one. There's two different ones. Yeah, the trackball on the left side. Yeah, that's the best mouse ever invented in my book. 100%. So yeah, if I was working, I when I broke, when my first one stopped working, it was like hard to find the second one. Tombow Mono 100 HB is a great pencil. Absolutely agree. Logitech Performance MX, that's the one I use now on my desk, my work desk. Uh, on the stream, like literally, I didn't consider hardly anything about the keyboard or mouse on this setup. But now that I'm doing more at this desk, and actually I'm really playing games, to be perfectly honest with y'all, if I'm not streaming, I'm only sitting here if I'm playing games, um, which hasn't been, hasn't been that much. But I bet I'll play some Warcraft maybe this weekend. Um, so maybe one of these days I'll look into a mechanical keyboard um, mouse setup that will like upgrade my game, something like that. So who knows? <sighs> who knows? Uh oh, works at a standstill. That's okay. All right, Toby's still looking at me to take him out. So and there's no one else here to do it. So I think that's probably going to be it for today, chat. Um, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, corded corded mice are really for I guess pretty much just for gaming these days, right? If you're you need that input, the there's an input difference, a milliseconds of input difference in gaming mice and keyboards that they're all corded. All right, Toby's really yelling at me. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep rambling. All right, um, that's it. I'll be around. We have a refill coming out this weekend, and um, yeah. We'll be around. I'll be around. We're streaming next week. I'm planning on streaming both days next week, even Christmas Eve, because um, I don't. I'll be here. I have nothing else to do. I'm not going anywhere. So we'll just come hang out. Maybe I'll wear a Santa hat on uh, Christmas Eve. We'll do that. We'll plan on that. Well, that gets pretty hot. So anyway, all right, that's all. Y'all be awesome. Bye. <laughs>